like I am, because you're nursing a sore throat, hey, that's good too. Right. Oh, <laughs> and he's Spider out there in, no, I almost said Boise, Idaho again, in Ohio. <laughs> I do like potatoes, so maybe it's just my my projected <laughs> enjoyment it might of be. potatoes. That's... It just might be. Um, by the way, um, I got a, an email from uh, Arnold from Spells and Curses. If you guys want to hear Spells and Curses, uh, they he was on episode 31, but he's two episodes ago. And he says that his Wednesdays was not, it was not right anymore because he was on the show for four hours. <laughs> <laughs> so he was like, I'll tell you guys, hey, Shells, my Wednesday did not feel right without a four hour chat about music. <laughs> See, we're not only changing people's horizons, we're also changing their times. Yes. So, <laughs> any music Time and space is, is relative with let's talk about the music. All right. So, any musician is welcome to come back on the show anytime they want to. So, anyway, there you go. Hey, I was on the show and I haven't left, so, you know. I know. I can't get rid of you. <laughs> Try squishing you. Try to smush you and deep fry you and all that stuff, and you keep coming back. It's okay. I know. I'm I'm impervious. I'm even sick, and I'm still hanging out. See, I'm I'm just you know motoring on. You 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 spread that web, and there you are. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you said you have some uh, some topics you want to talk about. Oh yeah, we're yeah. gonna. Let's get into some various music news and things okay. um, while we're kind of passing the time here. Um, a bit of news that kind of affects probably me more than a lot of other people, but uh, if anybody is a Nine Inch Nails fan, and once again, I've that. managed to talk about him twice, but um, a former keyboard player um, for Nine Inch Nails by the name of James Woolley did pass on very recently and very suddenly. Um, the causes are not yet out. We don't know. Uh, hopefully it wasn't anything bad, you know, but things happen. Yes. He, uh, this gentleman was on tour with Nine Inch Nails during their early, the first two albums, I believe, for Nine Inch Nails. Um, and he was at their Woodstock performance, Woodstock 1999. And uh, rumor is that he was the one who started the gigantic mud fight. So if anybody knows of the legendary mud fight that happened during Nine Inch Nails and coated the band and the crowd and everyone in mud, that might have been James Woolley. There you go. Yes, I saw that. When I saw his passing, I just like, spider. Yeah, I'm kind of bummed because, I mean, I'd listened to him, his work, with Nine Inch Nails, and um, he was also part of a. Uh... <laughs> There's a new drinking game, by the way. I'll get to that in a second. <laughs> but um, he produced an album with Rob Halford from Judas Priest that I'm a big fan of. Judas Priest did a kind of a, a industrial album with uh, James Woolley and also with John Five, famous guitar player. So, good stuff there, and just all around good, good player, uh, underrated. He might not have been like a virtuoso in what he did, but definitely underrated. Cool. Yeah, um, Sweet says we should make a new drinking game. Every time you mention Nine Inch Nails, we take a drink. <laughs> it does seem to come up every show, so there's the two, the two hot buttons. It's Google It and Nine Inch Nails. And I just said them twice, so now this this two drinks. I, if anybody's partying right now, they're uh, they're probably pretty well on their way. <laughs> yeah, for sure. But thing is, we just we just started that game, so people need now. I need to start drinking that. Unless you want to yes. catch up, people, you can do that. Okay, so I got a hold of Christine Faulkner, who is going to come in a little bit early. Because she told me earlier that um, she has to be at 5 o'clock in the morning, California time. We're the same thing. So uh, she'll call in in a few seconds. Um, 
and she's gonna end in her section her section of the interview a little bit early so she can go to bed <laughs> <laughs> so classic inning an hour into his uh, in, uh, an hour early might actually help Christine out <laughs> Christine out <laughs> so give her a second and we'll continue talking a little bit um, any more music news um, there was something else that happened recently I gotta remember what it was um, let me uh, do a quick search because I was following along on I think it was Facebook um, earlier today and uh, now I have to remember it um, Ooh, well here's something here's, here's a total tangent here's a total tangent now that I just saw this came up this is in my feed today Sean from Maximus we all remember Sean hi oh, Sean yes. how's it going man hi Sean anyway he's a uh, he shared this to Twitter, or not to Twitter, to Facebook, and I just saw it, and we had a little a little back and forth on comments about, about it, but apparently Ellen DeGeneres is in trouble with Again? various people. Apparently. I, I'll pitch it to you, and I don't think it's a big problem, so it's it's nothing to me, but, you know, maybe some people will disagree with me, but everybody knows that if you're following the Olympics, the Jamaican runner Usain Bolt is a really, really fast man. Like, really fast he's ooh, he's a speedy guy so Ellen DeGeneres made a photo a photoshopped photo of her kind of piggyback on his back while he was running at the Olympics with the tag that said this is how I'm running my errands from now on okay hmm. now picture that in your head that's funny because he's a fast guy you know that's the joke he's a fast guy apparently people are saying it's a racist joke <laughs> and I can't see I can I just can't see that anywhere it's just a silly picture and it's I don't think he would think it was racist I don't is there some underlying joke about about people of different skin colors giving each other piggyback rides that I don't know about I mean <laughs> it's just silly yeah I mean, I saw that earlier, but I wasn't paying much attention, attention to it until you mentioned to it, like, oh, hey. But, yeah, it, you know, it just doesn't make any sense for people to be upset about it, but, you know, people get upset oh, about just about anything these days. Yeah, they, they, they do. They seriously, seriously do. And people, chill out! Relax! <laughs> if the person who person who they they are you know, for example if, if she is doing as a joke she's a comedian or a comedian whatever mm. she's a comedian so that's what she does if she sees something funny she's going to act on it and then so if the um, so if the runner is not going to take offense to it it's all that matters yeah, I, I could really doubt that he would not see the humor in it because you know I think he would get the basic of the joke that he's just a really fast guy and you know what more is there to it and people are just looking way too deep into this <laughs> absolutely very very too deeply and it's just like got people chill out oh here's what I was looking for and it just oh. so happens that it was related to Maximus at the same time <laughs> <laughs> Who's See, coming it's on next circular. week? Um, it was posted on Facebook, so I'm going to assume that it's all good and it's public and, and ready to be talked about. So hopefully nobody calls and says, hey, shh, you can't talk about that yet. But uh, Maximus, our good buddies, are going on tour. <gasps> uh, they're going on tour, yes. Maximus is going on tour? Yes, it looks oh. like in September, the entire month of September... Three, five, six, seven, nine. Looks like a fourteen day, fifteen, fifteen dates. Well, a fifteen date tour. Blackie kind of told me a secret. I don't know if he told you uh, or Sean told you, but secrets. but 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 I can't say anything. Oh, so we're gonna keep these secrets next week. Okay, so you just gotta wait till next week, and Maximus will tell you guys all the awesome juicy news. So no more spilling the beans, Spider. Let's build the hype. Let's build the hype, everybody. 
build the hype. So yeah, if anybody a lot wants of- to know what's going on with Maximus, tune in next week. Yes. Also, next week is my birthday show, so you know you really gotta sh- come in. And so, anyway, we have been joined from California. My goodness, Spider, we are going. We're doing our frequent miles here. <laughs> <laughs> I've been saving up, so I was ready for it. And so we, we we were in New York for about a half an hour to be able forty five minutes with classic, and he had to scoot off to do a music video. And then, so I told uh, Kristen that she can call in early <laughs> and do a little bit of interview before she has to scoot off because she has to be, be at five o'clock in the next morning. <laughs> <laughs> a life hi. artist. It's just like I said, yes. no days off. <laughs> yes. So, hi, Kristen. How are you? <laughs> hello, hello. I am well. Thank you so much for having me on the show. You are so very, very welcome. Okay, so really quickly, those who are tuning in, even with you too, um, the show is Let's Talk About the Music, a humorous, controversial talk show. So we are talking about um, stuff that music industries, that you may have a bone to pick with the music industry. Even though you're a female music artist, so are you, ha- like, at a few topics a musician on before, they gave our their feedback about being a music in the music industry. What about you? Have you have any pros and cons on that? Uh, um, you know, <laughs> the music industry is an interesting. It's just interesting all around. Um, it can be very difficult to survive. I, I feel like I've been pretty fortunate to work with the many talented uh, professional musicians that I've worked with and mm-hmm. uh, have the nominations and the support of my production company. So. I don't really have a bone to pick. I'm sorry. Um, I've been super, super <laughs> lucky and really fortunate and blessed. So I'm kind of on the other side. I, I mean, I do think it's really hard to get into mainstream. And I prefer being an indie artist uh, because I have a lot more control over my career. But I have a really awesome production company, the Sound Bakery, that backs me. So maybe that's why I'm not so angry. <laughs> maybe. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I like hearing I stuff like that, though, because there's so much yeah. of the, the demonized stuff that says, oh, yeah, the record execs aren't out for you. They just want money and blah, blah, blah. So it's it's nice to hear when you get a good positive story that shows that it's not all like that. It, it, it really, you kind of have to find your own path. And you have to, I think you have to be somewhat realistic with your dreams, too, and how competitive the industry is anymore. Um, they don't really develop artists anymore. You really have to bring your career up to a, a place where it can, uh, it can be, um, you know, uh, considered for a uh, distribution type of uh, field. So, you know, having that too, having like that, that recognition and being real with that, I think helps. Yeah, for sure. That's cool. Yeah, definitely true. Definitely true. Okay, so any juice now? You look, you look, when I got your music here, you have a lot of big names on your little labels here. So any juicy details you want to share with the class? <laughs> oh gosh, um, <laughs> juicy details. Okay, yeah. so all of the people that I've worked with have been freaking fantastic. Um, I could tell a really cool story. Yeah. Um, so okay, so for slow down with Raymond Herrera. Uh, you guys know, and Christian Olds, and you know them, they were formerly in the band Fear Factory. Um, they they approached my producer about uh, a video game song that they wanted to actually produce and cut, and uh, my producer came to me with it, and so they gave us about three days. They, they sent us the track, these pro musicians, they came up with their phenomenal track, they sent it to us, and they're like, three days landed, or you're not considered. So my producer and I, Rob, we got in the studio and we were like, all right, let's just do it. I wrote it in one day. We uh, we actually, you know, went in and recorded it the very next day. And then Rob mastered it the third day. We sent it off to them and they loved it. And somehow we got it in that video game. It was the craziest nice. track I've ever done. Um, I think when I'm put in challenging situations like that, I really rise to the occasion because I think it's the best track I've done somehow. So that's kind of juicy. Um, I'll give you another story. I was lucky to work with Chet McCracken, who was formerly with the Doobie Brothers on my song, Phoenix. And um, I contacted him. He's the nicest guy in the world. And I was like, hey, Chet, I have a buddy, and it's his birthday, and he really wants some drumsticks. I have no clue what to give him because I don't play drums. You know, I'm like, can you, can you help me out? Like, give me, give me a suggestion here. And Chet was like, yeah, why don't you roll by GC Studio Guitar Studio? 